Welcome to the Bread House International Ministries. We are a church for all people. Thank you for joining us today, and our hope is that you experience the fruit of God's Spirit. Instructions on how to give online are simple and easy. Just visit www.breadhouseministries.org. Scroll down, click Give, then register your giving profile and start giving today. For questions, you can contact our church at 517-485-4209. Thank you for your support. Bless you and welcome back, brothers and sisters. I hope and pray that uh, our last lesson was a blessing to you as we uh, speak on uh, taking the city. I, I want to uh, start here on lesson two, uh, and I want to start off by making a statement that anger, our human anger, is a normal human emotion. Anger is a normal human emotion. Uh, when we read Proverbs 16 and 32, where it says, he that is slow to anger. And no, he didn't say he that is without anger, but he said he that is, is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that take a city. So it's two, two key points he, he's bringing out here. One is slow to anger. And, and number two, rules his own spirit. Amen. So there's something there that has to be dominated, something there that, that needs to be uh, uh, ruled. I think it's important for us to understand and be reminded that God himself uh, deals with anger as well as we as humans, uh, God's wrath. And, but his is a righteous uh, anger, if you will. Uh, look at Psalm 7 and 11, uh, where it says God judges the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. So God is, he, he himself deals with anger. So anger itself is it, not, uh, necessarily a bad thing. Amen. It's kind of like nuclear energy. Uh, we, we, we heat buildings and houses and, and we use the energy for various things, but they also use that same energy to make bombs, weapons of mass destruction, etc. Uh, so it's not really the energy that's the problem. It's what it's used for or how it's used. And, and, and what is it directed at? Uh, so, so God himself deals with anger uh, all as well. He's angry uh, with the wicked, the scripture says, every day. There's a such, there, there is such thing, and which I'll call it, and I'll, I'll, I'll term it, there is such a thing as anger under control or our, our constructive anger. So anger itself is not a bad thing, but but anger under control can be positive. Uh, constructive anger uh, can be a positive thing. Note what the scripture says, he that is slow to anger. He didn't say he that has anger. He just said he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. <clears throat> and he that rules his spirit than him uh, that takes a city. But when anger is under control or when it's when it's used constructively, it's a different different thing. Uh, let's look at Ephesians 4, 26 through 27 real quick for a minute. Uh, Ephesians 4, 26 through 27. Uh, the scripture says, uh, be angry. Be angry and sin not. So, so he said, uh, there's going to be times when uh, we're going to experience the emotion of anger. And it's, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, but he says the key is to be angry and sin not. 
be angry and sin not. Be angry and sin not. Then it says, let not the, the sun go down on your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. So he said, be angry, sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Don't leave place for, for the devil. Uh, uncontrolled anger or, or anger under control or anger that is struck, that is constructive. It, 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 it has a purpose and it's directed at the right thing. And it doesn't leave a door open for Satan to come in and, uh, dominate. Uh, the, the emotion of anger, it, again, is a, is a normal emotion. Everybody should feel anger uh, here and there. Amen. It's a normal uh, 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 emotion. It's normal that when we, when we uh, uh, see a perceived injustice taking place uh, on someone else, we should get angry. When we see uh, people being mistreated, that should stir up some type of anger on the, in us. When, 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 we, when we know what's right and we see wrong dominating and controlling, that should cause some type of uh, anger uh, when, we, when we see moral inequities. Uh, that, that goes on in the world and go on in our around, around us, unfairness, injustice, and, and those type of things. Because anger is a reaction to these things. Amen. Martin Luther King Jr. and, and back uh, in the uh, 60s, 50s, 60s, they, uh, when they was marching and water holes were turned on them and, and dogs were loosed on them when they were going through uh, struggles for civil rights. They had what I call a righteous anger and as they marched down the street and was being mistreated. So there should come a time uh, in our lives where we, we have what we call anger, but anger under control. And that's totally different uh, from uh, the opposite. Uh, there is a place for anger in our lives, uh, but the scripture says, be angry, but sin not. There's a place for anger, but if anger dominates us, then it, 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 we don't use it uh, properly. Our anger should be for the right reasons, the right issues. There's a place for it, but it should be for the right reason, the right issues. It should be directed at the right times, amen, in, in, in the right proportion. It shouldn't be out of proportion or out of control uh, because it's a normal experience. And it's normal to experience the emotion of anger when you see uh, more moral decay or injustice and, and all of those things coming on when, you, when, you, when you're angry uh, because of uh, inequalities and things like that. It's a, it's a normal reaction uh, to those things. It, it's not an anger that, that is felt. It shouldn't be emotion that is felt simply uh, out of our own pet peeves and our own uh, misguided perceptions of things. And, and that's where it can go off the cliff, amen, uh, when, it, when it comes that way. Uh, be angry, but sin not, right? That's what it say. Be angry, but sin not. Slow to anger, amen. In other words, anger under management. See, see when, when we manage our anger, it's important that our, that our perceptions and our uh, our, our anger is guided by the right thing, guided by the word of God, guided by the wisdom from above, guided uh, by things that are right, guided by a heart that's controlled by the spirit of God. Because when, 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 when we're guided 
when our hearts are guided by the spirit of God, we approach every uh, issue, every instance uh, with a sense of humility. Amen. Uh, everything is approached with patience. Everything uh, is, is approached less from a self-righteous perspective. Amen, if you will. Uh, less from a self-willed perspective. Amen. Uh, but, but it's controlled by a deep understanding of things. Amen. We're angry. You know, we get angry um, sometime at, at our children. Those of us that had children when they're in school, we know how smart they are. And, and if they go to school and come home with ease when you know they're capable of A's, that causes frustration and anger in a parent because you, you, you really feel like that child is not giving it everything that they can. Amen. Uh, it's, not, it's not a misguided anger. It's not an out of control anger, but it's an anger because something has taken place that shouldn't be taking place. If you spend uh, thousands of dollars on a child's higher education at a university and, and then before they finish the, 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 the uh, journey, they drop out of school and, and waste all that money. That's enough to make you angry at them. Amen. Uh, because of that. But Proverbs again, Proverbs 14 and 29 says, it, it didn't it didn't say anger itself is a bad thing. It just says he that is slow to wrath or anger. Amen. He that is slow to wrath. And here's what he said. Here's the key is of great understanding. So if if we operate with an anger under control or a constructive anger, it's because of our understanding level, amen, of what's in front of us or the issues that we're dealing with. So he that, if we're slow to, to, to be angry and frustrated and give up, then it's because our understanding is deeper. We understand things at, at a deeper level. How well do you understand? what's going on in your life and the things that are around you. I can't answer that. You have to answer that for yourself. I think it's a question that uh, you should ask yourself, but he that is hasty, he says, of spirit, he exalts folly. Let, let me say it another way. Whosoever is patience have great understanding. So if a person is, you find yourself around a person that has a lot of patience that tells you that they have great understanding of, of, of what's in front of them. But the one who is quick tempered, it displays foolishness or folly. Uh, and and they, don't, uh, they don't have everything they need to do what they need to do the way they need to do it. Amen. But God is calling for something different from us. If we're going to take the city, we need to have great understanding. If we're going to take the city, uh, it's important not to be quick tempered. Uh, you see, because uh, anger itself is a motion. It's a human emotion. It's not necessarily a bad emotion, but it, but it needs to be an emotion that is under control. An emotion that uh, is directed properly and, and, and is constructive. Uh, I want to show you uh, what I what I mean here. Let me let me take you to a couple of scriptural examples uh, to kind of expand on just this little little uh, a little more. Because uh, I want to show you some examples of of uh, constructive anger, our anger under control. Uh, let's look at Mark three and five. And this 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 scripture here, and you know that section where Jesus expressed anger anger at the hardness of the hearts as he was healing uh, on the Sabbath. Jesus was, he came to heal and deliver. And while he was healing on Sabbath, he was dealing with some religious folks that had a hard heart. 
and they were looking for a way to find fault with him and accuse him. So in Mark 3 and 5, it, it, it says that when, and when he had looked around about on them, now notice what it said, he looked around about on them with anger. So here Jesus himself was dealing with anger, but his anger was under control and it was it was directed correctly. You know, it wasn't an out of control, out of uh, a character anger. But if it was a, if it was out of character, out of control, angel, he'd have called down legions of angels to come and deal with them hard hearted folks. Maybe have done like Moses did hit the rocks, smite the rocks, say, drank you rebels when they were uh, asking for water after God had brought them across a great Red Sea and with a mighty hand. And then they get on the other side and they complain. So Jesus looked around about on them with anger. And here's where his anger came from. He was grieved for the hardness of their hearts. Here, here he's saying, I, I did all this. I came to, uh, to my own and my, my own is rejecting me. I came to show them the way. And, and, but their hearts are so hard. I, I'm having a hard time penetrating and that uh, the knowledge and the understanding of their hard hearts caused him to be grieved. Amen. Because of their hearts. And he said unto them, to the man, stretch forth your hand, and he stretched it out, and his hand was restored as whole as the other. So, so Jesus is saying, I'm here to do something good, but their hearts are so hard, and uh, but I'm not going to allow them to stop me from doing what I, what I came to do. So he healed the man, and the man was uh, made whole. His, his hand was just like... The other side, it was restored whole. So Jesus expressed anger at the hardness of the hearts. I believe that Jesus today expressed anger at, at the heart when he see the hardness of some of our hearts. Amen. After all that he's done for us and, and brought us through, and if our hearts are still hard and we refuse to, allow him to do what he, I believe it makes him angry. God is angry at the wicked daily. Certainly I'm not suggesting uh, that a person have to be in the category of wicked if their heart is hard, but I am suggesting that if our hearts don't soften up, if we have a heart, 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 and it doesn't soften up, we're in danger of falling in that category. Jesus even had constructive uh, anger towards the money changers in the temple. You know that story, very familiar story, how that his anger and his zeal caused him to go in there and turn over all the check tables of the money changer and things like that. It was an emotion that, that uh, a human emotion that he was dealing with, uh, just like we deal with human emotions every day. Uh, let's look at that, John, St. John 2 uh, and uh, 14 through 16 and said, and, and he found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves. See, they had, they had turned the temple and courtyard into a marketplace. They were, it was all about them making money and doing commerce uh, in, in, in the courtyard. They, they sold uh, oxen, sheep, and dove. Those were items that were used for sacrifice. So they were they were making money off the sacrifice. They were selling them uh, uh, for people. Uh, and they were selling those things. And, and the changers of money, they were sitting. So they were exchanging money. They were selling things. They were, they were turning what should have been a house of prayer and meditation and thanksgiving into a, a a business and into a marketplace stream where we have to be very careful about uh, uh, turning God's house into something uh, that's solely to market personalities and, 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 and turn it into something like it's a, it's a show or a party. I'm very concerned about those things because I don't want God to be angry at me. 
and you shouldn't want him to be angry at you. I'm not saying that, you know, selling things for fundraising. This was a different thing. These were people coming in and setting up like a business and they were selling things to put the resources in their own individual pockets. It wasn't necessary to go back in the temple uh, to make it a better place. And Jesus found himself uh, looking around in verse number 14, and he found in the temple those that sold oxen, sheep, and the doves, and the money changers, and the changers of money sitting. 15, and said, and when he had made a scourge of small cords, so he wrapped up some cords, and then he drove all out of the temple. So he took that whip and those cords, and he drove them all out the temple, and the sheep and the, and the oxen and and poured out the changes of money. So he, he even drove out all the animals and he overthrew the tables. His anger got him. And uh, verse 16, and he said unto and he said unto them that sold doves, take these hints. Make not my father's house a house of merchandise. So they were they were using it for their own. Uh, enrichment, using it for their own empowerment, and in his anger, his zeal, his anger. So, so it was anger, but it was anger under control. Now, some may may ask the question: Well, didn't it, since he turned over the money change and he whipped everybody out of there? Don't you think that was out of control anger? You answer that question. Maybe it, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe it uh, was right on the borderline, but. Uh, but it was really anger under control because he had more power to do even more than that if he wanted to. But he, he restrained himself uh, to not uh, do because he had the he had the mission in mind and the focus was on on the mission itself. Amen. we see this this anger under control happening with Paul while he was in Athens. He dealt with this emotion of anger, uh, this human emotion of anger. Look at Acts uh, 17 and 16, when it says, Now, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred. And when he said his spirit was stirred, that means he began to get angry. His spirit was stirred in him when he saw. And here's what, what caused his spirit to stir in him when he saw the city wholly given over to idolatry. So uh, anger is a, is a normal human emotion and there should be an anger uh, in each of us when we see our children, young children dying in the streets, when we look at our communities and young men and women are killing and shooting each other in the streets, when we see the homeless, a man, uh, without food, we see them out in the cold. Uh, when we see injustices and and moral decay, and, and we should get angry. It should be a righteous indignation and, and a righteous anger, uh, and 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 we should understand that. Now, that being said, there there is uh, such a thing as an out of control anger or a destructive anger. Amen. We talked about. Uh, with the examples that we shared thus far, we talked about a, a anger under control or our constructive anger. But there's also a anger that's out of control. And uh, in other words, a destructive anger. Amen. Uh, some people uh, live their life in perpetual anger. I don't know if you've ever seen people that just live their life in perpetual anger. They're angry at everything. They're like a quick fuse. I, I was uh, uh, at a coffee shop one time and, and well, I, many times and I was sitting there and, and I'll sit there and read and do some things. And one time I was there and this one young lady uh, got in line and somebody, uh, jumped in line ahead of her and she was so angry she yanked her car and gear backed it up moved it into a, jumped out her car went over to that other car and was just screaming at the top of her lungs and and i was thinking to myself now that's anger out of control 
And uh, another time I was sitting there and it was a old elderly gentleman, you know, uh, no, no real reason. I mean, I see them all the time, but uh, uh, someone just took too long backing into a parking space and he didn't like it. He had to wait uh, 30 seconds longer than he wanted to. And he just, he zoomed around, went in the parking space, jumped out of his car and was just staring the, the people down. Just anger, anger out of control. Anger that would, was, could have been disastrous. It could have been very destructive. And nowadays, you know, people have weapons and other things and the slightest little thing can tick people off. So, uh, but some people live a life of just anger, everything. Uh, they have a quick fuse, a short fuse and, and anger over, angry over petty issues, uh, stuff that, uh, that doesn't make sense. Sometimes the anger is misdirected at the wrong thing and the wrong people. Uh, angry over pet peeves. I, I don't like it like that. I want it like this. Then they're anger and just runs the whole day. Uh, their perceptions that are misguided. Uh, mis, you know, misguided perceptions. Anger out of control. Or out of control anger. Anger that is destructive. Amen. Uh, in, in the scripture, uh, that I, that I love, is it, it reminds us that the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So misguided anger, uh, proud, anger from pride, anger from, from selfishness, anger from self-righteousness, anger from uh, all of those type of things, amen, really doesn't work the righteousness of God. Uh, when we're driven by selfishness, when we're driven by impatience, when we're driven by our biases, then we have to be concerned and be careful because those things don't work the righteousness of God. It's a misdirected anger. Uh, and, 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 and there's something that needs to take place to get us out of those things. Amen. Uh, look at James uh, 1, 19 and 20. And he reminds us here in, in, in James 19, 20, he said, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man works not the righteousness of God. So, so, so here we go again. Uh, the wrath of man doesn't work the righteousness. It doesn't produce righteousness. So he said the way you get around that he, he, he said, be, be swift to hear, quick to hear. Don't uh, listen before we uh, speak and slow to, to respond uh, and then slow to get angry. And, and we have to be reminded that man's wrath uh, never works the, the righteousness of God. Uh, let me share with you a few examples of destructive anger out of scripture. Uh, you, you know your anger is a destructive anger uh, when it's done out of rage. Proverbs 29 and 11 puts it like this. He said, a fool utters all his mind, but a wise man keep in it in until afterwards. So a fool is quick to speak. He, and he says, be slow to speak. So we know that our anger is, is destructive when we, when, we, when we respond out of rage and we're too quick to respond. Amen. Because so, fools give a full vent of their rage. They just, you know, that young lady that was screaming at that that man that jumped in front of her, she could care less about anybody that was watching her. Her mind was strictly zeroed in on that fact that he jumped in line for. Her. And I mean, she was fuming. And another lady got out and tried to calm her down. Uh, but but it was it was a it was full vent of her rage. And uh, but it says, but the wise bring calm in the end. You see, so we know our. Our rage is is destructive when when it's done in rage. When our anger is destructive, when it's done 
in rage. We know our, our anger is destructive when wisdom is not used and forgiveness is not an option. So if, if you respond to a situation or an issue and we don't slow down and, and operate out of wisdom, we know that it, it has the potential to be a very destructive anger. Uh, Proverbs 19 and 11 puts it like this. He said, the discretion of a man defers his anger and it is his glory to pass over transgression. Let me, let me put it to you another way. A person's wisdom will cause them to be patient. And it is one's glory to overlook an offense. In other words, uh, a, a person's wisdom will cause them to be patient, but it's, it's a positive thing for a person to be ready to overlook an offense and be ready to forgive. So remember I said uh, that uh, it needs to be loaded with forgiveness as an option. Amen. If not, it can be destructive anger. See, we know that we operate in destructive anger when no one can reason with us. I'm so angry, no one can uh, reason. Proverbs 19 and 19 said, a man of great wrath shall suffer punishment. Then it says, for if thou deliver him, yet you must do it again. Let, let, me, let me put it to you another way. A hot tempered person must pay the penalty. He said, go ahead, rescue him. He said, and you're going to have to do it again. Because uh, it's hard to reason with a hot tempered person person with a short fuse a person that person has to want to change within themselves and I, I'm here to tell you that uh, transformation regeneration simply means change amen I believe that everybody can change uh, we know that uh, our anger is in a destructive place when we become argumentative have you ever been around someone that's ready to argue all the time Proverbs 21 and 19 puts it like this. He said, it's better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman, an argumentative person. Amen. It's better to be alone in a wilderness place than to be with someone that wants to argue all the time. See, when our anger and frustration causes us to be argumentative, it's destructive. Amen. It's destructive. Uh, it's better to live in the desert than with someone that quarrels and nags all the time. Proverbs 17 and 14 puts it like this. The beginning of strife is as when one letteth out water, therefore leave off contention before it be meddled with. So he said, if you start a quarrel, it's like breaching a dam. Remember when in uh, New Orleans, I remember when Hurricane Katrina and the dam broke. And when the dam broke, the whole place filled up with water. When the place filled up with water, it destroyed people, destroyed land, property, a whole lot of stuff. So he says, if if we're if our anger causes us to always be in quarrels, quarrels, it's like it's like breaking the dam. So he said the smart thing to do is drop the matter before a dispute breaks out. I'm talking about taking the city, right? Uh, so if we're going to take the city before the city can be taken, the, the insanity of destructive anger must be understood and dealt with. Before the city can be taken, the insanity of destructive anger must be dealt with and uh, understood. And uh, certainly... I believe we can take the city and that's what I want to come back with a lesson next week and 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 talk about the fact that the insanity of this uh, how dangerous is the insanity of destructive anger and and come back and join us in lesson three uh, on taking the city bless you see you next week 
Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast. We hope and pray that the Word of God has enriched your life and blessed your soul. Please take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube page and like us on Facebook. To stay connected with upcoming services and events, please visit us at www.breadhouseministries.org or click the link in the description below for more information. We hope that you enjoyed today's broadcast. Instructions on how to give online are simple and easy. Just visit www.breadhouseministries.org. Scroll down, click Give, then register your giving profile and start giving today. For questions, you can contact our church at 517-485-4209. Thank you for your support.